Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about thin film interference. Yet another type of interference, this one that happens in a very specific situation um, when you are dealing with a thin film of material, um, like a surface of oil. Sounds specific, but um, you might have seen this, like an oil puddle uh, on the asphalt making beautiful rainbows or soap bubbles giving you the same kind of effect. We're going to get into it. Here we go. This is topic 9.3, um, more interference, HL interference. Okay, so here's what happens with thin film interference. It is, uh, there are three different mediums that we're talking about. Uh, typically, the first one is air. Um, and so we have light coming in and it reflects from two different boundaries. So we have a thin film of material. N2 here is our thin film of material. A lot of times you're going to see this situation or a similar situation where it's like a, a little uh, film of oil on top of, say, water or something else. And light is coming in from the air and reflecting twice. This is the idea with thin film interference. Light will reflect twice. Um, so we know from, say, Snell's law and the law of reflection that when uh, light hits a boundary between two media, um, say when light is moving through the air and then encounters something like oil or glass or whatever, it's going to do two things. One thing it does is reflects. The other thing it does is refracts. So when light hits this boundary, some of the light will reflect from the top of the thin film and some of it will refract into the thin film. Um, well, if it's a thin film, then it's on top of some other medium. Um, and so this medium down here, we'll call it N3 for the refractive index of the third medium. Again, two things will happen. Um, part of this light will reflect off of this boundary. And um, down here, there is some uh, refraction that happens too. Not pictured here because you don't really care about it. Um, because the thing we care about is in this crazy situation, I have an incident beam of light coming in. Some of it reflects here. Uh, other energy from the light refracts in and reflects off of this surface and then makes its way back out, back into the air. So at the end of the day, you have two... Uh, kind of beams, if you will, to rays of light coming up out of the thin film, ray one and ray two. And would you look at this, ray two has gone a further distance than this one. There's a path difference, which means we're going to get some interference. Um, all right, so the wave that reflects from the upper boundary, one picture here, is going to interfere with the wave reflected from the lower boundary, two pictured here. These two waves can interfere with each other based on their path difference. All right, so we can basically figure out the path difference knowing the thickness of the film. Um, we can figure out how much further the second wave goes than the first one. There is one very exciting uh, detail with thin film interference, which is what happens when a wave reflects from a boundary. If you recall studying this, um, here are the boundary rules. All right, this is um, a great animation from Penn State, which shows what happens um, here pictured with strings. So we have a thin string and a thick string, and then a thick string and a thin string. And we kind of see, if you remember this, there's always a um, reflected pulse. In this case, it's a pulse. But there's part of the wave gets reflected and part of it gets moves into the new media. You could kind of call this refraction. It's the same idea. Um, so part of the wave will reflect and part of it will continue to move through. When you go into a denser medium, we notice that pulse gets flipped upside down. The wave gets flipped upside down much like when it hits a hard boundary, where when it goes from a dense medium into a less dense medium, it does not flip upside down. That's a phase shift. That's a 180 degree phase shift if it's going from a low density to a high density medium. So that's the thing we looked at before that you will need to remember for thin films because it applies. All right, so here's the idea. Um, if the refractive index of, uh, say, the second material is greater than the first material, that's an optically denser medium. That's how we say it. So a higher refractive index means it's got a greater optical density, we call it, which is more or less correlated to the actual density of the medium. Um, but that's very much like going from light into oil, where light has a refractive index of 1, and oil has a refractive index of 1.3-ish, something like that. Um, it's going to phase shift, just like the wave pulse going on the string. When it goes from a less dense medium into a denser medium, the reflected piece flips upside down. All right, so you want to picture the wave coming off of the top surface here as flipped upside down. 
Um, but it matters whether you're going into a denser medium or a not so dense medium. Um, so, uh, okay, here we have oil and water. And so in this situation, oil has a higher refractive index than the water. Um, so going from oil to water, you're reflecting off of a less dense medium. And so you don't get a phase shift. All right, so you get a phase shift here, but you don't get a phase shift here, which makes things uh, deliciously complicated. All right. Um, usually this is the situation you see where you have like the highest um, refractive index material in the middle. So it's like the highest density thing here. So you get it's a phase shift on the first reflection, but not on the second reflection. That said, that's not always the case. So you do have to be careful. Okay, but assuming that's the case, which is most of the time with these thin film problems that the IB is going to give you, um, there's usually one phase shift because the data booklet equation has it baked in. Uh, okay, so here's what happens. The rules for constructive and destructive interference get all screwed up then because now just based on the reflection, this wave and this wave are starting sort of out of phase. So if I want constructive interference, I need the path difference to be half a wavelength because if this wave goes half a wavelength further, um, it will kind of catch up to the first wave because they're already out of cycle because of that phase shift thing. All right, so this one got flipped on its head by reflection. So this one needs to be offset by half of a wavelength to get back in phase with the first one. All right, so that's confusing. Uh, you got to be really careful with this. I'll show you how to decode the data booklet equations with this because essentially the rules are the opposite of how we do it in like a normal situation because one of the waves gets phase shifted on reflection. Right. So the path difference could be half a wavelength or three and a half wave or sorry, one and a half wavelengths or two and a half wavelengths. Um, that would give you constructive interference for this very specific thin film situation. OK, um, here's another just example of that picture. So another similar one that we'll look at is um, soap bubbles, All right, bubbles um, like, you know, blow, blowing bubbles uh, as a kid that this is what's going on. It's a thin film of soap. It's just soap. Um, and there's air inside and there's air outside. And so you have a thin film of material. And we'll talk a little bit about why they look like they look. But what happens is light coming from the outside. Well, some of it will bounce off the outside of the soap bubble and some of it will bounce off the inside of the soap bubble. Uh, this ray is going from air into soap. And so when it reflects, it reflects off of a denser medium. So it phase shifts. Whereas this ray now has made it into the soap and reflects from the air boundary. Now it's reflecting off of a less dense medium, so there's no phase change here. You want to try to keep track of that, all right? Um, because you want to make sure that there's been one phase change in thin film interference. That's what the equations we're going to use have baked into them. Um, one thing that um, thankfully the IB does that makes this a little simpler is we don't actually deal with any of these angles that you're seeing. These are drawn this way to help us see what's happening. Um, you can absolutely do these problems with angles, which gets very exciting because you can incorporate like a good old Snell's law in there. But we're going to assume that everything is normally incident as in normal. Remember is the fancy math word for perpendicular. So we're assuming ray one is going straight down. All right, this ray is going straight down in. And so there's going to be part of it that reflects back up, part of it that goes in and reflects back up from here. All right, so everything is straight up and down, which makes means we don't have to deal with any trig or uh, Snell's law or anything like that. All right, so imagine all these rays is vertical. The equations we have in the data booklet do that, and the IB, therefore, should uh, only give you problems where the rays are straight up and down. Okay, um, assuming that's the case then, um, and if we say that the thickness of the film is D, little d, then we have what we call optical path difference, which is how much further does this ray need to go, say ray three need to go compared to ray two. Well, it's down here and back up again. So it's kind of 2D, right? If this distance is D, the thickness of the film, you would just multiply the distance by D, that's how far physically it goes further. And so for the optical path difference, we're essentially accounting for the fact that like in this example, ray three is going slower than ray two, and um, perhaps its wavelength is stretched out. So to account for all of that weird stuff that happens, we multiply that by the refractive index, and that takes care of all that business. All right, so this is the path difference. This is how much further ray three has to go compared to ray two. And like we said, if you have constructive interference in this crazy situation, you want the half 
wavelength type of stuff to happen. All right, so here's our equations for thin film interference. Um, all right, notice a couple things here, but this is that optical path difference, two times d times little n, which is the refractive index of the thin film. All right, so that's like your second medium, the medium sandwiched in between the other two, the thin film of material. Um, little d is the thickness of the film uh, in meters, uh, which will give us a wavelength, and also wavelength is in meters. All right, and now here's the wild part. Um, remember before we had like uh, n theta and n plus a half theta uh, for these different integers, these different possible orders, if you will. Um, well, we used n for refractive index, so we're going to use m for the integer in these equations. Why not? All right, so here's some important assumptions. The assumption of this equation is that you have one of the two rays phase shifted on reflection. That's not literally always true for every single thin film situation that exists in real life, but the IB has baked those into these equations, and most of the time they do that. All right, almost all of the time they do that unless they're feeling mean. Um, you do just want to check and make sure that that assumption is true. If it's not, you just flip these. All right, so if that's not true, if you go from like, less dense to really to medium dense to most dense and they both get phase shifted well then you're back to the kind of original rules so you would say m lambda for constructive and m and a half lambda for destructive all right um that's kind of mean if they do that to you because this is what they put in the data booklet um and most of the time they do that so you just want to make sure that it's that situation um as described before we're also assuming that the rays are coming in normally up and down everything straight up and down you don't have to worry about any angles um, all right, and like I said, be careful. M is the integer here. All right, so let's look at this because this is um, one of the hairier parts of the data booklet. All right, this is this is pretty rough. Um, this has has uh, taken down many an IB physics student, um, and you can probably see why. All right, this is topic four. Good old topic four. Remember the good old days? Topic four: wave behavior. Instructive interference, destructive interference. Just looking at like two speakers walking along a line, going loud, quiet, loud, quiet. Those are the days, huh? Um, so here are the equations for, you know, constructive and destructive interference with like a normal situation. If you're, if the two waves are one wavelength off or 10 wavelengths off, you have constructive interference. If they're wavelength and a half off, it's destructive. Well, 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 here come thin films to change the rules on us because now there's this weird phase shift on a reflection thing and the rules get flipped. And to make matters worse, over here, n is your integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, so on, so on. Over here, m is your integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. And n is the refractive index. All right, this is where you really, 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 really have to study and know your data booklet like it is truly your best friend in the world. Because it will help you out, but it can also betray you. Um, because, as you can imagine, in the heat of the excitement of an IB exam, it's very easy to see like a regular interference problem and flip through the data booklet. And guess what? You see a subtopic called interference. And there's like two speakers interfering. You're like, oh, good. Oh, good. My trusty interference equations. You start using these for like a, a speaker interference or a two source double slit or something. Um, and these will give you the exactly wrong answer because they're exactly backwards from these. All right. So be very careful. All right. These two equations are very specifically for thin film interference. You don't touch these equations if there's not a thin film of material and you're dealing with thin film inter in interference. All right. These are your generic interference equations that will do you pretty well for most interference setups. Of course, remember, this is the double slit or the two source uh, interference equation. So anytime you have two sources interfering, this tells you about the all the distances involved. Um, so these two equations are really specific. You don't want to use these unless you're looking at a thin film interference problem, um, which are honestly kind of few and far between. All right, but that's that's what they are. That's where they are. Be cautious um, with them. All right, and then uh, remember, this guy is for your diffraction grading, and this guy is for your single slit diffraction. All right, so for sure, you want to know the difference between all of these equations, where they are, where to find them, how to use them. That's... Uh, honestly gets you at least halfway to success if you just really know your data booklet, what every equation is, um, and how to use them, and how to not use them. Okay. Um, last thing is, okay, why do we care about this? What does it look like? Well, you have seen some of this, I'm sure, um, with stuff like soap bubbles, and again, uh, oil. This is places you see it a lot. If you see something kind of shiny and rainbowy out on the asphalt, it's probably some oil or something like that, a thin film of oil, if you will. Um, because thinking about the equations, if there's a thin film, um, certain wavelengths based on the thickness of the film, uh, 
certain wavelengths will interfere either constructively or destructively. All right, so if you see like a yellowish part of this rainbow here, what's happening is the thickness of the film right here is thick enough that the yellow wavelengths constructively interfere based on whatever thickness D the oil has here. And maybe some of the other wavelengths are destructively interfering, which gives you that like yellow color. All right, so you see what's constructively interfering. The blue parts are where the blue light is constructively interfering as it reflects off the top of the oil and the bottom of the oil. Same idea with these, um, you know, soap bubbles. There's very, very, very small variations in thickness. So, you know, the soap bubbles are not exactly, exactly, exactly down to the nanometer, exactly the same, you know, thickness all the way through the bubble. So parts are slightly thicker, parts are slightly thinner. Based on those little changes in D, the wavelengths that interfere constructively and destructively change. And you see all those different colors now interfering constructively and destructively, giving you the rainbow of color as the thickness kind of changes in a gradient over the, the material. Okay, here's the last thing. Here's a paper one question for you to try. So go ahead, pause the video, give this a shot, see if you can make sense of those bananas equations. Okay. Good job. How'd it go? Did you get? What'd you get? Um, all right. So you want to use the equation for destructive interference here because we are dealing with um, a minimum. The intensity of the reflected light at this wavelength is a minimum. So if it's a minimum, that means destructive interference. So I want to use this equation. They're asking us for a possible thickness of the film. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, now you got to be okay with the M versus N thing. N is the refractive index, so that can't change. But M is a thing where it could be zero or one or two. Um, so you might just kind of see it by looking, but we can kind of guess and check, which is usually the, the thing to do with your uh, integer kind of equations like these. Um, you could put in the M equals zero and D would equal zero. That doesn't help us very much. Um, but if M equals one, this is one possible uh, thickness. Well, I don't see that as an option. If m equals 2, though, well, 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 look at that. Um, the equation works out to lambda over n. And we can keep checking and see all the different possible thicknesses that it would give us, but the only one that matches a possible answer here is this, wavelength over n. All right, that's a real paper one question from not too long ago at all. So this is the type of thing that they'll give you. Um, we'll look at some paper two practice as well. Like I said, for, for better or worse, thin films are pretty few and far in between. They don't come up too much. So uh, really the main thing is know what those equations are, know when to use them, and know to never, ever, ever use them unless you see this very specific thing. All right, there you go. Uh, enjoy and have fun.